Howdy all of you delicious people, I'm here today to review The Peripherals, Season 1, Episode 3. So, I feel like this show is missing something. It's definitely not missing dialogue, that's for sure, but it's just missing something. I really think they could have, what they should have done with this show, is they could have took the sim thing and really, like, stretched that out. They could have really had uh, Flynn... Who is just killing people in the in the future, and she, of course, wouldn't know the difference because she just thinks that it's some game and some whatever. But then, all of a sudden, when finally someone has to go on and finally explain it to her that it's like, hey, you're killing actual people in the future, and maybe then they can play that game of like, well, hey, we're gonna try to figure out how to kill her in the past. Then, boom. Like, that would be a much more interesting story to, like, kill or be killed. Like, try and, uh, like, they should have gone on and just done that. They should have focused on that. They should have stretched that out more. But then all of a sudden, in the second episode where she's already found out, it's like, oh, well, <laughs> this is actually the future. It's like, really? So, <laughs> like, you're just going to give her that right away. Uh, but then when looking at it, it doesn't really seem that uh, we had Flynn who was with West all that long either. So yeah, so like I was also just kind of like hoping there to also be like other gamers or something like that or other poids or other whatevers. I don't know. I was I was hoping for a lot more out of this, but this is just what we get. So, we go into this third episode and we're focusing on Corbell. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Um, so, we get a little bit of a backstory of Corbell and to really just find out that this guy has just always been an a-hole for whatever reason. Uh, but now it seems like he's getting paid by future a-holes. So... <laughs> But he doesn't know what to do with it. It seems that he's going on and thinking like, well, like, I can just, like, keep having people give me money to do nothing <laughs> and see where that heads. And then when I have to go on and forcibly do something, then I'll decide after a certain amount of time, like, what to do. <laughs> so here's my question. Who the heck was Grace in this episode? The lab coat lady, it's kind of bugging me What? Ha why she was to be in of any importance. Are we going to find out in another episode that she was to be one of those uh, doctors that were also potted in? Is that what I'm assessing? Is that my feeling <laughs> of, of what happened to Grace meant something? Not quite sure. <laughs> but so... We have a lot of dialogue and we have a lot of running around in this episode. There is some interesting build for this episode, but am I going to remember what happened in this third episode via a week from now? Probably not. <laughs> probably not. I'm going to probably need that recap of what happens in the show because I'm probably going to forget a lot because a lot of this stuff was meaningless. Um, but, you know, there was something that could keep me intrigued, but we're almost halfway through this season already. We're an episode away of being halfway through. <laughs> and this show has lost its momentum, clearly, in a third episode. So with that said, I think it's about that time to just double five this bad boy up. Uh, oh, Wilf, we go on and get a much more backstory on Wilf, if it matters to anybody. Come to find out Wilf has a much more tying in with Alita West than we are to think. Uh, it could explain why in the pilot episode we just see Alita West as a younger kid uh, instead of a much more older version of Alita, because more than likely... Uh, maybe Alita had changed her looks at some point, and so maybe the only thing that Alita wants Wolf to 
know her by is a younger version of herself, and that could make all the sense in the world. But so, let's go on and let's get into that double five. It's about that time, yet again, to of course go into spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about that time to get a spoiler. Foo, 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 this episode. So, a uh, little bit of action in this episode for everybody. A little bit. A little bit country, a little bit rock and roll. So, actually a, a massive bit of country and a tweed bit of rock and roll. <laughs> It's so like in the 70 minutes that roll into this episode, we had like 65 of them. They're all dialogue and then like five minutes of action. It's true. <laughs> but so let's go on. Hopefully I'm going to rattle all of this stuff off. There's so much to just kind of goofily poke through here. <laughs> so we go into the beginning of this episode and we have Corbell who is talking to this biker gang. I guess one of the leaders, one of the guys who seem to uh, be talking the most is CJ and another guy named Tut. So, it seems that uh, Corbell is kind of changing his strategy of what he's doing at this car lot, and he is putting a bunch of crosses all around his, uh, his place. And we go in and have this biker gang that's like, well, hey, like, but, like, where are we ever going to go to have our stuff get fixed? Like, our bikes or whichever. And Corbell is like, well, you know, like, for how, like, I want to continue this, like, this friendship between us. Like, you know what I'm going to do? Like, if you ever want to come over and, like, need anything fixed... Like, I'll go on and fix it myself, and I'll do it for free. Like, is that a, is that an agreement? Is that an arrangement? And so CJ's like, yeah, like, let's shake hands on that. And so Corbell is telling, like, CJ and all of his biker gang to be like, hey, how about you just go into his cars? Just, just try them out. So CJ and his biker gang go into this car and come to find out he cannot get out of his car. So Corbell is to go on and trick these guys. And he's like, yeah, they're not going to get out of those cars. And, like, the bulletproof uh, windows were, was a nice touch also. So we have Jasper that ends up coming out. And so Corbell is telling Jasper, the young Jasper, to, like, just pour water over the cars. Because soon... It's going to get really hot out there today. It's going to get like a, a ridiculous high temperature because I guess global warming is to be a, a horrible thing in 2032 or whenever this really was. So no clue. It should be like years before that then. So it should be 20 something. It should be like 10 years so, 2022? All of a sudden, 2022 global... I don't know. Because uh, Jasper looks really young there. But so, Jasper goes on and pours this water. And we have these guys who, I guess, just are to supposedly die in this car. These cars, because it gets too hot. So... We go on to have Corbell, who is swimming in his pool, and we have Mary that is uh, kind of dipping her feet into this pool, right as Corbell is to stand up in his pool and pee in it. So Mary's like, did you just pee in the pool? And Corbell's like, it's my pool. And she's like, well, yeah, but like, Maybe I should go on and just kind of dump your 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 butt so, like, I can get a clean pool. <laughs> so, uh, Mary just starts going on and on about the deposit and is to, uh, like, what she really means by the deposit is kind of the, the future people going on and giving him money. So, Mary's a state that maybe, like, they should just kind of hold on to the money 
and not do anything and just kind of see what happens. Or uh, Corbell can kind of like take real interest in the Fisher kids and like see where that heads him. Um, and so we have Corbell is like, well, who do you think that I should go on and have uh, someone look into that? And Mary is to state, it's like, well, what about Jasper? And Corbell is like, I'm sorry, but I don't trust that guy. And Mary's like, well, like, who else do you have? So we go on into the episode and we have Flynn who is taking uh, Billy Ann Baker and just telling her everything. Nye mean everything. Like, not kind of codingly, sprinkling, whatever. Like, she's laying it all out. So Billy Ann is just like, wow. Like, so, like, magic medicine and, and future people, like... Do you really believe that they're 70 years into the future? And Flynn is like, well, they're they're very convincing. So Billy Ann is just like, well, all right then. Like there isn't much that Billy Ann can really like say to the contrary of any of this. But we also have Flynn who is obviously getting like drones to fly around wherever she's at and like Flynn is is going on and having all this uh, kind of gadgetry to just kind of if somebody's going to approach her, she'll know about it. And so Billy Ann's like, wow, like you really have like a setup here. And and, Ann, and Flynn's like, well, yeah, like somebody wants to be dead. So we and then we have at some point where Flynn is telling uh, Burton that she explains all this to Billy Ann because she needed someone to tell this to uh, besides Burton. So we have Flynn that makes her way uh, to the printing business or printing business uh, to find out that uh, Burton and uh, Carlos are just kind of setting up all these guns and they're putting all these this weapons uh, stuff together. And immediately we have Flynn who's like, oh my god, why are you setting up all these guns? It's like, like this isn't what this place is for. And Burton is just like, well, hey, like that company, that uh, Margolis company just like bought out this store. And so like... We can do whatever we want in here. <laughs> like there isn't any like there isn't anything that we that like the future won't just buy for us. So we have Flynn and we have Burton who go on to uh to drive off here and I was kind of in all honesty like I was wondering what, like, Constantine was doing from the last episode. It feels like they, like, barely show him in this episode. And, like, I was like, shouldn't they have gone on and, like, kind of continued from all those, like, magic cars that he saw from episodes before? <laughs> weren't they going to continue on that? Or weren't they going to continue to have, like, Constantine more and more suspicious about things? It doesn't really seem like he is. It doesn't really seem like he cares. Uh, but anyways... So, and it seems like they're, like, they showcased him so little in this episode that I don't think I want to even go into what he really does, because I don't think I really remember it all that well. <laughs> like, I know he's barely in this episode, but I don't remember what exactly he did of any real importance. So, I know he went into a bar, but beyond that, it just, just flies over my head. So... We all of a sudden are to have Connor 
that shows up uh, at Flynn's job and is talking to Burton and Connor is mentioning how like he had gotten this a little message when he kind of woke up after being drunk and so we kind of have them joking around about how uh, like Connor has no legs and like Burton is telling Connor it's like hey man do you need a hand he's like hey man that's that's pretty like it's pretty awful you doing that joke and then so like Burton just starts to go on and on about Connor about like well hey man like like uh like arm and a leg like leg this like do you need a leg up <laughs> so Connor's just like oh you shut up <laughs> and he's giving him the middle finger and so so they go on, they push on here. So Flynn and Burton are driving off. And so really the conversation to be had here is to have Flynn explain like where she had gone to and what she had done. And so Burton seems like he's kind of getting left out. But then uh, we have Flynn who is telling Burton, it's like, well, hey, like, if you ever have a plan of what we're going to do next, like, you need to explain to me what we're going to go on and do. Like, we need to hash this out. And Burton's like, well, yeah, like, I promise that uh, whenever I'm going to do something, I'm going to let you know. And then Burton goes off and talks to Corbell and is to kind of threaten him, but then is to also to pay him 200 k to kind of keep keep Burton off their backs and so Corbell's like how is it they're getting this money <laughs> and so Corbell is like yeah I want somebody to look into this so we have Flynn that goes back into the simulation and and I think that this needs more explaining so I think I'm going to go on and also explain the Wilf origin part of this episode. So Wilf, come to find out, is to have been in an orphanage with Alita West. And at some point there are to have been Mr. and Mrs. West who end up going on to pick Alita to want to be their child. And Alita is standing like, well, like, I won't go anywhere without Wolf. And Mr. West is a state to Wolf. It's like, well, like, Wolf sounds like an unusual name. Like, do you, would you mind if we were to go on and change your name to, like, a much more traditional name, like Wilfred? And Wolf is a state. It's like, yeah, I wouldn't mind. But, like, he's going to change it to be Wilf. <laughs> so that way it can be shorter. So now we understand why Wilf's name is Wilf. Because it's short for Wilfred. But Wilf just sounds stupid. He should have just said that, it's like, hey, my name is Wolf. Because F all those people. <laughs> he can be his own person now. Because he can be. But so... Now we go on to have Wilf and Flynn who are going on to retrack down where West had made Flynn drive to. And so they're just driving around and Wilf is just like, well, we're like nearby Buckingham Palace. Tell me if anything looks familiar. So at one point, Flynn is to say that they were to turn right at some point, and this looks familiar. So Flynn and Will start hanging to a direction, but all of a sudden they end up getting uh, stopped by this one kind of uh, like coid uh, or like android like policeman. And so come to find out, Flynn's character is not registered uh her her poid or her stab her stag is not registered so 
all of a sudden we have this policeman that is stopping Flynn because it's like, well, hey, like you're not registered. And Wilf is just like, well, like I have a whole story that I have to tell you about why that is. And so we have Wilf that goes on and on and on about this story where supposedly as if this droid gives a rip. <laughs> so Wilf is to explain after going on and getting... um optically drifted or connected to Flynn and it seems that both Flynn and Wilf now like know one another like inside and out they're very familiar with one another and so we have Wilf that goes on to explain that this ploit was to have looked like his former girlfriend and his current girlfriend had went on to be in this ploit and she had gotten very jealous and she had gotten very upset. And so really Wilf could not have gone on and fixed this issue, this problem of how this, char this character looked. And so again, when his current girlfriend goes into the same ploy, she even gets more upset because it's like, why haven't you fixed this yet? Why haven't you changed it? I'm really, like, very unsettled about why you were to have gone on and and had this as your old boyfriend. So, or old girlfriend. So, Will then finally turns to Flynn and is to convince Flynn that it's like, I love you and, like, I love only you and this and that. And so, we have Flynn who's supposedly giving this, like, trigger to state that uh, when he touches his... his his chin or whatever that she should go on and leave or say that she wants to leave so once wolf and flynn kiss we go on to have flynn say it's like well like can i leave now and the robot ends up saying yes like as if it believes this story so flynn gets unregistered and she goes off uh back into the trailer and she like almost wants to get up for a moment but then she's like whoa like like that just felt weird uh the whole hoptic drift to where she goes on and asks burton later on about the hoptics and like how it felt like how it felt to be in them and so let's go on and let's do what burton was going to do doing so, Corbell uh, was to meet with Burton. And so, Burton is to want to pay Corbell off. But also, he's going to threaten him with a sharpshooter, a sniper, that is kind of off in the distance. And so, Burton presents this kind of option. It's like, well, hey, do you want the carrot or do you want the stick? Meaning, when somebody is going on in a treadmill and kind of running, or somebody's going on and just kind of running and somebody's running ahead of them with a carrot, with a string and a stick, it's like, well, hey, do you want, like, the the first thing or do you want, like, the whole, like, uh, the whole setup? And so, we have... Garrett is, or, or we go and have Corbell that's just like, I don't care. Like, just kind of say whatever you're going to say here. So, we have Corbell that's like, well, okay, like, I just want to let you know that I'm going to try to pay you off here because I know that, like, somebody's, like, kind of in your ear, so I'm going to pay you off. But so, Burton is to also state that he is to have been in the military and they had given him these hoptics and at one point he had gone on to this bar and he had bizarrely blacked out and then we had woken up the guy that was next to him had gotten beaten to an inch of his life and that was to have been done by burton the whole thing it is is that burton is to have everyone that he's ever trained with inside Burton's body. So 
Burton, I guess, had just kind of lost it and blacked out and become another person because of these hoptics, and he lost control. So, I guess there was an issue with somebody that he had connected to hoptic-wise. So, Burton had kind of threatened Corbell with that. that it's like, well, hey, like, I, like I've really been trained really well. So... Burton is to also state that he is to have himself not be alone. And we end up having this gla glass being shot. And Burton's like, well, the next shot would be for your head. So, you gonna take the money? So, Corbell goes on and takes the money. And it seems that we go on and, like, have Corbell, who is meeting up with Jasper, who is Jasper getting this massive payout in this bag and Billy Ann is seeing the money and telling Jasper it's like well hey like where did you get all this money from and Jasper's like I don't know so Jasper goes on to give this money to Corbell Corbell's like what do you think is in this this package or what do you think is in this backpack and Jasper is like well I don't know but like I could feel like it's money and so Corbell dumps it out and Corbell is to be tempted just like, hey, like Jasper, do you want do you want some of this? And Jasper kind of like picks it up and looks at it and he's like, you know what? No, 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 no. And like And Corbell is like, no, 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 no. Like you've already taken it. But so here's the thing that you've missed out on. Corbell is a state now that Jasper has taken this money. He needs Corbell to do something with it. Or Corbell needs Jasper to do something with this money. And Jasper's like, well, what do you want me to do? And so Corbell tells Jasper, it's like, well, I want you to look into the Fisher kids. Because this is where this money came from. And I don't understand why they had this money. So you need to figure out why. You need to look into it. So... Jasper's like, well, okay, but I don't, I don't get it either. So, that's kind of like the, the real tail end of this episode. So, we also have uh, Charisse. Charisse is going and complaining to Daniel, uh, the security guard that had attacked Burton's uh, pod poid in the episode and killed it so Charisse is going on and talking to Daniel and stating that what exactly he's doing it's going far too slowly to the point of Charisse now stating it's like hey what are you doing pick it up so we have Charisse that goes on and is to have all of a sudden this uh floor that's in front of them just disappear and everything in front of them is to seemingly be nothing and that Sharice could easily push Daniel and have him fall to his death and so Sharice instead starts walking off and Daniel's like oh my god no 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 and Sharice is just kind of walking over this thing and is to just kind of Stay, it's like, oh no, I'm not going to kill you. Like, I'm not going to kill myself either. So, it was all just a trick. It was all just a kind of a, a simulation to kind of throw off Daniel. And so, then Charisse then is to find Grace, who is this kind of scientist or doctor of sorts. And Charisse goes on to talk to Grace and is to threaten her and we're thinking again oh this is all just like play right she's gonna kill her off uh grace ends up pleading that she has kids and so sharice is like well yeah you should have thought of your kids and so all of a sudden we find out that the tea that grace had been given uh has some some kind of connection with hornets and so when Sherry's ends up opening this door, all these hornets come flying in to infect Grace and kill her off here, sting her multiple times. 
and kill her. And so, don't know why Grace was killed. Don't remember who Grace really is. But so, now we end up going on to uh, continue what happened with uh, Flynn and Wilf. We also, to, to do this, there is more stuff going on with Lev also. So, uh, we had Wilf and we had Lev. And so, when this Poid isn't going on and doing anything, Lev just puts it in a box. And Wilf is like, seriously? Like, you put it in just some box? Some, like, almost coffin? And Lev is just like, well, like, where did you think that I would just put it? Some bed somewhere? Like, no, like, this isn't a real thing. This is just some robot. Like, why would it make any sense to... For a thing that doesn't mean anything to put it in a certain place somewhere. To put it in a bed somewhere. So, we have Flynn's poid that ends up getting up. And they ask uh, if this is to have this poid like... Is it a real human? Does it have feelings? Does it have anything? And by the time that Flynn starts to... Or the Poid ends up starting answering this, that's when Flynn comes back and is like, You guys put me in a box? And it's like, yeah, we did. So... But anyways, so Flynn goes on and is talking to Wilf. And at some point, Wilf is talking to Ash, trying to understand what's going on here. So... Especially when Wilf had to talk to Ash about the whole, like, register thing. And when the, the robot was kind of coming after them. So, and Wilf was kind of checking, like, what to do. So, Flynn and Wilf immediately figure out exactly where West was. Uh, to the point of going all the way back to uh, the scene of which where uh, the Burton Poid was getting the eye ripped out. Like, they ended up going into that room where uh, where Flynn was getting that done to her. And Flynn was getting flashbacks from that thing and was kind of getting freaked out. But so, they go into the room and they look around. And so, Wilf ends up kind of pulling out this thing from these poids. Uh, that had done this procedure. And so it's like, well, yeah, we're going to figure out who these doctors really were. So when Flynn and Wilf decide that they want to leave this, uh, this area, this room, all of a sudden they're met by Daniel and some other kind of, uh, uh, robot, uh, guy that's with them. So we... Of course, have the kind of similar scenario that happened uh, with Burton's AI before. We had uh, Daniel with this kind of uh, this uh, this air blast kind of gun, this concussive gun, and so we're thinking that uh, Daniel is to kind of do the exact same thing to Flynn, and there's not going to be much repercussions, but. We have Daniel that states this time around that if he goes on and blasts uh, Flynn, she's going to feel it in her real life. She's going to feel it in her other self. And we also find in this episode, as Burton is to consistently ask Flynn, like, well, hey, what's going on with your hand? It seems that... Flynn's hand continues to, like, tighten and continues to, like, move and adjust and, and to the point where it kind of feels that Flynn may go on and start to uh, have problems with her hand as if, like, she can't control it or maybe at some point, like, her hand is to be damaged or injured to where it's just kind of tightening and she can't control it. Maybe it's the side effect of the sim, not quite sure. So it might just be at some point that she might have difficulties in her real life 
from the sim. So, but we go on to have Flynn and Wilf, who it seems are both going to get killed off at this point. And we have a moment where we're thinking that Daniel is going to kill Flynn, but we go on to turn this all around and Wilf is to be able to get this uh, this kind of knife or this scalpel and stab into the robot eye. And we go on to have uh, Flynn who kind of knocks away Daniel and is to kind of turn around and get his gun and blast Daniel. And so... Uh, we have both Flynn and, and Wilf that kind of get out of here and scramble out of there. And that's, to me, what would kind of just really end this one, would really end this episode. So let me know in the comments below if there's anything that I did to forget about, because I'm sure that there probably is, because there's quite a bit of dialogue or quite a bit of stuff just kind of going on here. Plus, I did certain scenes out of the order, because really... Uh, when looking at them, there's certain things where I'm like, okay, like, I don't really understand the whole importance about certain things, uh, doing them in the order of which that they happened in the episode, because to me, they could be said anywhere because it has no real connection of the flow of the show. So, or otherwise there were some scenes where I forgot about and I had to go back to them. So either way, at the end of the day, I think it's about that time to say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Let me know how you felt about this episode, but uh, goodbye. One thing, uh, we had the whole scene with Mrs. West, uh, when Wilf made it back to Mr. And Mrs. West's place. And so Wilf had gone on to ask Miss West, it's like, well, hey, when was the last time that you saw Alita and... Uh, Mrs. West is saying, it's like, well, I haven't seen her in a long time. But the last thing that she did cryptically say to me is, uh, the last time that there was a snow in Berlin. And so, Wolf didn't know exactly what that meant. And so, when... Flynn ends up coming back to talk to Wilf. Flynn then notices that uh, that Wilf is a showcase that it's snowing outside, even though it's really just raining. So Flynn is looking at Wilf. It's like, well, that's not really real now, is it? And Wilf is like, no, I just wanted to get in the headspace that uh, Alita was in when she was talking about the last snow in Berlin. And we had, uh, of course, Flynn that makes the assumption. It's like, well, what if snow is just a name? And then so Wilf ends up making the clear consensus. It's like, well, maybe it's Jon Snow. And like, what are they trying to tie in some Game of Thrones bullshit in this one? So they end up finding out that Jon Snow had died uh, in a certain address. And so that's where they could have figured it out where... Uh, West was to have lived. And so that's the one thing that I wanted to state uh, also because that is a scene in this episode. So uh, if there's anything else, let me know in the comments below. But it's good that I just quickly remembered that because I was like, oh, crap. Like, I forgot something else. So bye, everybody. Bye, bye.